Hi guys and welcome to today's Logic Pro X tutorial. Today I'm going to talk to you about buffer sizes. I'm going to read an extract from the Logic Pro X training manual just to make it make a bit of sense before I go into detail via video. So it states in the manual, when communicating with the audio interface, Logic does not receive or transmit just one sample at a time. It places a number of samples in an input buffer for recording and in an output buffer for monitoring. When a buffer is full, Logic processes or transmits the entire buffer. The larger the buffers, the less computing power is required from the CPU. The advantage of using larger input and output buffers is that the CPU has more time to calculate other processes, such as instruments and effect plugins. The drawback to using a larger buffer is that you may have to wait a bit for the buffer to fill before you can monitor your signal. That means a longer delay between the original sound and the one you hear through logic, a delay called round trip latency. Usually you want the shortest possible latency when recording and the most available CPU processing power when mixing so that you can use more plugins. You can adjust the input output buffer size depending on your situation. So in layman's terms, if you're creating a logic project with a variety of instruments, uh, vocals, and it's very heavily loaded, you may sometimes experience a system overload error message. So just to show you where this option is, if you go to Logic Pro X and preferences and audio, this is where you can find all the information about your output in, in input device. So you can see that I use a Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. And the current uh, buffer size is set at the actual Logic Pro X recommended buffer size of 128 samples. This results in 11.2 milliseconds and uh, the five milliseconds output. So um, the processing threads also is set at automatic. The pro the process buffer range is large. Multi-threading is set to playback tracks. Summing is high precision 64 bit and my rewiring is off. So I've got the recommended settings currently um, on. So what I'm going to do now is just show you where you can find a bit more information about your performance of the Logic project that you've created. If you go to the drop down arrow from the LCD um, display here, and you select custom, you will now see that the CPU and HD um, metering has appeared. If you double click on that, you'll see a performance meter now appears a bit more clearer here. So I'm gonna play the song, just a section of it now, just so we can monitor what the performance is of the processing threads and the drive at the moment. Processing threads were reaching just below 50% and on the other side, the drive input and output, that was absolutely fine. So let's now have a look at the impact if I change the buffer sizes to a smaller buffer size. So if you're using your core audio, no audio interface to use Logic, which obviously I wouldn't recommend, what you need to do is go to Logic Pro X, preferences and audio, and you might want to change that setting then to 32. So if you change it to 32 input output buffer size and apply those changes, you're going to notice a slight difference in the performance metering. I'm just going to show you that shortly. Okay, so just take that off and if we just double click again, it says CPU and HD. Now I'm going to play back this at to stay oh no no and although i try to run away my heart is still remains yeah so as you can see 
the performance was a lot more impactful and the metering was showing a, meet, a reading of about 75%, I believe. So what that tells me is that it's obviously not the right setting for, for me, for this project. And the popping sound that occurred, I don't know if you heard it guys, uh, it's like a crackling so, uh, sound. Um, that's because the CPU is trying to work a lot harder to um, maintain the quality of the track. However, it doesn't because it creates popping, crackling sounds. Um, and that just basically means that the project is too much for the CPU when I'm using the buffer size of 32. So what we're going to do now is put that back to what logic recommendation is of 128. Now, just to um, point out to you guys, if you are having issues, please just play around with some of the other si sizes if 128 isn't working for you. And hopefully you'll find one that actually fits with the devices that you're using. Um, and hopefully it would then counteract any system overload issues. So you may um, also hear some latency when you're recording your vocals. And again, that's down to the buffer size as well, because as I mentioned earlier, the round trip latency when that um, when you record your vocals and then the input for your microphone for your audio interface and then you play it back it, it can again create latency if you haven't got the right buffer settings and your CPU is overloaded so I hope that makes sense if you have any further questions about this please leave a comment below in the meantime please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so Remember to head over to my website www.rochellearthers.com where you can find lovely t-shirts like this for sale. This is one of my favourite designs. It says music is not what I do, it's who I am. So for all you real musicians out there, you'll understand what this statement means. Have a lovely day and thanks again for watching. Remember to keep creating music from your heart, mind and soul.